Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review in partnership with Name Brand Wigs. I'm here to show you the new style by Henry Margu called Morgan. This is in the color 8H. If you want to know more about this long, straight, nearly fully hand-tied cap style, then stick around. is a new style by Henry Margu and I'm thrilled to be bringing it to you. Name Brand Wigs did send me this style for review. If you've not checked them out, I strongly encourage you to consider looking at them online. Their website is namebrandwigs.com. They have a great customer service team, lots and lots of support, education. They really do a lot for our wig wearing community and I am very thrilled to be representing them in this review. Let's take a look at the style from all sides. I will be showing you this color outside as well, so if you're curious about the color 8H, I will talk about it a little bit later in the video and I will go outside. I do put timestamps in the description box, so if you're here only for certain things, go look at those timestamps and you can skip to whatever makes the most sense for you. This style has a almost fully hand-tied cap. I'll take the wig off in just a minute so that you can see the cap. but. What that does is it gives this one a lot of realism. So it really sits nice and flat to the head. There is no permatease, so you don't really have any poof or lift. So if you're looking for poof or lift, you're not gonna get this on, get that on this one. But for those of you who want an ultra realistic, flat to the head, no poof style, and you're looking for something long, this one checks a lot of boxes. Now, we've got a lot of very subtle long layers. And it's, you know, honestly, it mimics human hair so much in the way that they cut these layers. You can see there's just the, it's not really face framing, but there's some shorter layers right up here in the front. And then the end is not blunt. It's got these, I'm standing on my tiptoes because it's so long and I can only get so far back in my tiny little room here. Um, so it gives a really natural density at the bottom of the wig. It's not super thick or dense. It looks really realistic. So a couple of challenges that I'm having with this piece that I think may need a little customization depending on your own preference is the front actually is pretty dense. There's a lot of hair up here in the front and it does like to hang in the face a little bit. So I've been working on training it by sending it like this, taking my hands and kind of training it to go back. That will work some and so depending on how much you dislike hair hanging down close to the face and how much lift you want in the front, just doing this regularly as you wear it may be enough for you to train it off your face. But if you're looking for something with a little more lift in the front, then you'll probably need to take steam to this one and get some lift using uh, just a clothing steamer, steaming it up and off the face a little bit, holding it till it co cools, and then you'll get some lift that way. I don't recommend doing that on your head, <laughs> but that is one way to get lift in a synthetic wig that may need a little help. The other thing I've noticed, and we'll take a look at this lace front right now. So the lace front is actually quite good. This is a dark color. There you can see that lace right there. Their lace is a bit light for my skin tone, especially when I have a tan in the summer. So I can see this lace when I lift the hair up if you find that to be the case for you, you can cut the lace. These are come ready to wear, so you don't technically have to cut the lace, but if you either think the lace is visible on you or you don't think it looks super realistic to have that straight of a line there, if you adhere your wig with it stays or some sort of spray, what can happen is when you tack this down to your head and adhere it, it can sometimes create a line of demarcation and you can sort of see that. 
My guess is most people aren't going to notice because people aren't that observant, but if it's bothersome to you, just cut it. I have a video where I show you how to trim the lace. I'll link that in the description so you can go watch that. The other thing I am noticing is it's fairly densely knotted at the lace front here. So while I think they did a good job of keeping those not small and it doesn't look terribly knotty, I definitely think it doesn't quite mimic a natural hairline because of how dense it is. Now, again, personal preference plays a huge role in this, and I want you to hear me when I say this. When you watch reviews, you are getting the reviewer's personal take on the style. Their personal preferences come into play. Even when we try to be objective, we can't help but describe things based on how we see them. You may get this piece and think they're, the, the front is just fine. It looks perfect to you. So I am not knocking this wig. I also know some people who have incredibly densely grown, <laughs> not because it's human hair, they're bio hair, dense, uh, hairlines. It's just the reality. We're all so different. Some of us have sparse hairlines. Some of us have thick. Some of us have widow's peaks. Some of us don't. So all of that will be a factor in your comfort level with the wig. You can make synthetic wigs your own. You can modify them. And sometimes those modifications really aren't serious like surgery to the wig and sometimes it is. I want you to learn how to work with your wigs. Your wig journey will be so much more joyful and successful if you learn how to do some basic things with wigs that will help them fit you and your preferences better. I have a ton of videos on this. I have a Tip Tuesday series. I show you all kinds of things. So if you have not followed me or seen some of my videos and you are going to be wearing wigs, I strongly encourage you to do so because I teach you some of this. I show you how to pluck a part line, which I actually think this one could use. It's fairly densely knotted, although you can see down to the monofilament. I would prefer to be able to see it just a little bit more. I, mean, I think it looks a little bit more realistic that way. And in that video, I do show you how to pluck the hairline as well for a wig that you find is too densely knotted. Maybe a little bit of plucking of the hairline and plucking of the front will help this one lay a little bit better. It might not fall so far forward if you get some of that hair. And then in the parting space, it may lay a little bit flatter and more defined if you part pluck the part line. This does have a full mono top, so you can actually part this one anywhere you want to, kind of within all of this space here. Now, another caution I'm going to give you is the piece that I got really wants to part where it's parted. I played with it a little bit. Let me grab my comb. I played with it a little bit to see um, you know, how it wanted to part. And I want you to see, when I go to part it the other way, it absolutely fights me. It does not want to part. Now, that is not uncommon when you get a wig. Even ones that have a full mono top, and they always come with sort of a preferred parting space, that just requires a little bit of work on your part. Now, part of that work is just redirecting those knots so that they want to go the other way. Sometimes spraying it with water and just taking your fingers and working it in the direction you want it to go, sometimes that's all it takes to help redirect them. Now, this is still falling in my face, but can you see how much it's staying over to the side? When I first did that, I had to hold it to keep it so I could talk to you guys because it just wanted to spring back. The more I work with this, the more you're gonna be able to redirect that. Now, some wigs will only do so much and then they won't do any more. In that case, if that's your experience, then I would take some, this is regular synthetic, not heat friendly. I would take a spray bottle of water and a hair dryer on low heat and work it with that. Spray it with water and then work it with the hair dryer with, a, with your fingers or with a comb and just work to get that redirected. You will be able to successfully redirect that part line. Some wigs will do it easier than others. I, I really want you to know this though because I want you to have fun with your wigs and I don't want you to feel stuck. So this one you can part anywhere but you may need to work with it to get it to part in your desired spot you can do it though. You absolutely can do it. Let's talk about this cap. So in the beginning I mentioned nearly fully hand tied. 
you have your full mono top that's what I was referring to when you get a mono top synthetic wig almost all of them will come with a seam right here this is a seam that reinforces the monofilament and the lace front so they're a little bit of different material and so they've actually put two different kinds of material together and that helps to put them together and reinforce it sometimes you can see that line a little bit on the wig this one is quite a ways back you get a lot of lace before you get to that seam the odds are people are not going to be able to see that, but if you, it bothers you, you can take a little bit of face powder. We're shedding a little bit. Let me see if I can get the camera to pick up that hair. Do you see that hair? I'll talk about the shedding in a second. Um, just take a little bit of face powder and dab it on to, to blur that seam. It works great, and don't worry about it. You can fix that. This has the lace going all the way to the ear tabs. You've got your soft ear tabs with bendable stays. You've got an extended nape, Velcro adjusters. Back here, where you see these lines, that's called closed wefting. So this is wefted, and then they put a, a material over the top to close it off. I personally really like closed wefted caps, especially on a long wig like this, because it prevents the hair from poking through the other side of the weft. That can be a real challenge. If you've ever owned a, a wig that has wefting, you'll notice sometimes some of the hair fibers will be working their way through the backside of it. It doesn't necessarily negatively impact the wig if not a lot of fibers do that, but enough of them work their way through and you could risk seeing the wefting. So I really like that. It does add a layer that if you run hot all the time, it could impact the coolness of the wig. I think it's minor, but it's definitely something to consider. And then all of this. So you've got your monofilament and then everything next to it, everything directly kind of behind it, that's all hand tied. So what you get is probably like from here, am I in the camera here? From here, all the way is all hand tied. Why is that significant? First of all, it creates a, such a realistic look to the wig, really realistic movement in the hair fibers because they're sewn in kind of individually into the cap versus sewn onto a track, which is what wefting is. It's a track of wefts. And so that hair can kind of spin around on the axis of that knot and really move naturally. The other thing that it allows you to do is if you're outside in wind and the wind blows, the hair is going to, you know, maybe move around and you're not going to see wefting. You're going to see right down to cap. Now where they put the hand tied sections, they actually did cluster knotting. So can you see that's a, those are cluster knots. So they take multiple fibers and, t and tie them in together. It's a little bit less labor intensive. And I don't think it's really going to impact the realism of this piece because it's all back here. You still have all of that monofilament, which is single knotted, individual strands, very realistic. I wouldn't worry about that at all, but I want to call that out because you might look at it and think, well, why does it look like this? Because not all hand tied caps, let's try to get this parting back where it belongs. Sometimes I struggle with these long wigs if I put them on, on camera to get them situated again. So I'll talk while I situate. Not all hand tied caps come with cluster knotting. So just keep in mind, there are variations. All right, the other thing I wanna tell you guys about, this does tangle. It does not tangle as bad as some synthetic wigs I've had at all. But anytime you get regular synthetic that's relatively long, you will be dealing with tangling. Always carry a wide tooth comb with you so that you can comb through the fibers I would say at least once an hour if you really want to manage the tangles and not have a real tangled mess when you get home so just throw one of these combs in your purse in your backpack in your car in your desk drawer wherever you can so that you are prepared to do that now because of the hand tied cap I do think there's a lot of styling potential if you wanted to do like a half up half down with this you could do that so easily and you wouldn't have to worry about seeing wefting because it's really far below that. Another thing I think that would be super cute with this is a really polished ponytail. Because of this length, I think you can kind of work the hair back 
I'm so bad at this on camera. It's so challenging for me. And then see how some of these shorter pieces pop forward? What you can do with that, so once you get all of the hair sort of worked back, you know, put it in a low pony, you can put it in a braid, but then you could either just let these pieces hang down or you could tuck them, depending on the coverage you get with your bio hair, and they'll hang down just a little bit. And it gives it such a casual look and hides the transition to the cap. So I think that would be really, really fun to do with this. Okay, let's talk about fit. I think this is running just, it's pretty average, but I think it's running a little bigger than average. I actually have it cinched in a fair amount, and I have a 22 inch head circumference. I really think 25, or 22 and a half inches, I think you're gonna be fine. Let me just see how much I have it cinched in, because I actually could cinch it in even more. Yeah, you guys, I'm cinching this in. Let me actually cinch it in even more. I'm cinching this in a lot look at how far in all of that I really think this is gonna fit average large oh yeah that's better but I feel like I could even cinch it in more so I honestly am going to go out on a limb and say if you have a 23 look at the stretch on that if you have a 23 inch circumference I think this is gonna fit your circumference now, don't come at me if I'm wrong. It's hard to guesstimate fit. So many things going to fit. Boy, this video is going to be long, but I think some of these tips are super important if you're new. When we talk about fit, we can tell you how it fits us, but my preference for fit may not be yours. I am used to wigs being a little big on me because I have very, very small over the top of my head measurements. And so I don't particularly like it when a wig is tight on me because I'm not used to it. But if you have a larger head measurement and so a lot of wigs fit you a little tight and so you've gotten used to wigs being tight, then you might find something more comfortable than I do when it's tight. That's why it's really hard, but I can tell you I have this cinched almost all the way in. It's still fitting me super comfortably. It is not tight on me and the stretch is significant. So hopefully you will do with that what you will. And now I get a, a kind of a lot of extra cap at the top. And so what that means is if you're bigger than me and you're over the head measurements quite a bit even, I think this is going to fit you. Please go down to the description box below. You just drop down below the title. There's an error, error, arrow, and then you can go see what my measurements are and just compare them to yours. I am getting really, really good coverage on this overall because these ear tabs go all the way down here, you can barely see my bio hair. You can see it a little bit because it's just short enough that it sort of sticks out. Um, but I really think I'm getting good coverage on this one. So I'm gonna say if you are average petite, this is going to be big on you. And since it's a hand tied, clothes wefted, it's harder to modify those caps. Um, so I would say average to average large pushing large you might be able to wear this even pushing large i do think the cap is kind of big and and fitting that way and as you can see as i'm talking i'm tucking you can tuck this um you can cut bangs into this you don't have a template you're gonna have to cut them from scratch but look at how that lays so if you are a bang girl and you want to cut some bangs or maybe cut a shorter fringe in this. I absolutely think that you can do it. It also might help with the challenge of how it's laying in the front. And if you cut bangs, then you don't have to worry about that. So before we talk about color, my kind of overall impressions. I definitely think there's a market for this one. I think there are people out there looking for really straight, flat styles that are long and oftentimes when you find a wig that's this length it tends to have some curl or wave and this one doesn't have any of that so I definitely think people are going to be pleased and I really like the premium cap I think it feels very comfortable and it helps it to fit really close to the head and really realistic all right let's talk about color 8h Now, I struggle with Henry Margot colors, especially the ones where they just give you a one number and an H because it's really hard to know what they used in that color. An eight is a medium, typically described as a medium chestnut brown. 
When they put an H on the end, it means it's highlighted. You don't necessarily know what colors they've used to do the highlighting. I think this is a beautiful, warmish brown, not red. I don't really see red in this. It's definitely just sort of a, a warm, a neutral to warm medium brown. And then there are these very subtle, I hope you can see them, lighter colors throughout. That's the highlight. I'm going to see if I can pick anything out. It's so subtle. I can kind of just see the tonal differences. Hopefully you can see that there too. It's like a, a, a light golden brown almost. There's a bigger one right there. This piece right here. I would consider it more like a light golden brown. It's They're not really blonde highlights. I mean, they might be blonde, but they don't look blonde. It doesn't look like you took blonde highlights on a brunette. It's very, very subtle. Gives it some good dynamic color gradation, but nothing extreme. It almost looks like it's just your natural hair and has most people's natural hair, if they don't use box color on their hair, has some variation in the color, just a little bit of color differences. That's what it reminds me of. It definitely would be great for one of my brunette wig sisters who isn't really into the heavily highlighted wigs. You don't like, uh, you don't want blonde highlights. You don't want it to be super obvious. You don't want anybody looking at your hair asking you about it. I think this could be a good one because I don't think it's going to draw a lot of attention, but it's not flat and like just brown. There is a little bit of dynamic difference in it, which I think makes it really flattering and really natural. Let's get outside so you can see this color outside. I will tack on a out of the box for you guys on the end that I did for Instagram so you can see exactly what this looked like out of the box, but it looked just like this. I didn't do anything to it. I, I combed through it. I've played with it a little bit, you know, done these things. You've seen kind of the way I play with them, you know, playing with the fibers, putting my hands through them. That's all I did. I didn't hang it upside down. I didn't put it on a mannequin head. I didn't spray it with water. I didn't put any product in it. So you're really getting a true look at this, but you'll be able to see out of the box as well. Thanks for watching, you guys. I know this was a bit longer, but there were a bunch of things I think were needed to be said in helping to educate you guys. And if you want to follow me, then you need to know that I am all about education. But very few of my wig reviews are just talking straight about the wigs. I'm always trying to find an opportunity to teach you something because I know how hard the wig journey can be. I know how scary, how frustrating, it's hard when you get a wig and it doesn't look like it looked on the person that showed it on a video and you really, really will do well if you learn how to work with your wigs and get some realistic expectations. That's why I do that. Thanks for watching you guys. Let's get outside. Okay, here we are with this beautiful deep brown, medium dark brown with some very subtle highlights. Go into the sun that just actually went behind a cloud, but probably still enough. See how much more golden that makes it look? can't get my arm out far enough for you to see the whole length of this. It's so long. All right, let's go back in the shade. This would have been a really good color for me early in my wig journey because I liked dark browns and the, the highlighting gives it some dynamic uh, interest without making it feel overly highlighted, which I couldn't have done early on. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Here we are with the unboxing of Morgan. First time I'm seeing it, right along with you guys. Whoever was on Instagram, that is. Obviously, I've seen it since then, but when I filmed this, all my reactions are genuine, you guys. I'm super excited. I don't get to see long hand-tied caps very often. 
Plus, it's always fun to see something a little different than I'm used to. She just felt so lush right out of the box. For these new releases, I don't often know what to expect. So that's also the surprise. It's a good one. If you want long, I hope all my walking you through how to take care of this one helped you guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all.